clear idea of what their career path could be. People really criticize her because she changed her clothes three times. You know, as many as the three generations sharing only one room. Take it off, and watch it, and after that, I put it back into the box. Join Culture Matters for this very special series as we take you on a journey to explore the evolution of a nation, its people, its stories. Modernization and urbanization have taken place at rapid speed within China in the last three decades. Such transformations are directly reflected in the rural and urban landscapes, skylines, and in the people of China. Today, we can still witness these changes thanks to the efforts of photographers. Their photography provides an invaluable window for the world to understand China. In this episode of Culture Matters, self-taught German photographer Thomas Voiten and freelance photographer Charlie Shah share their love for photography and the China they have captured through their photos. Culture matters, it matters. Hello everyone, welcome to the special edition of this program. The world has seen China changed in the past decades. And there is a special group of people. They witnessed and transcribed the changes visually to the world. They are photographers. Join us here in the studio are two photographers. First one is Thomas Voiten from Germany. Welcome Hello. to the show, Thomas. Coming from Germany in 2005, Thomas Walton is the general manager of a multinational company in Shanghai. As a self-educated photographer stimulated by his time in China, Thomas captures pictures characterized by their unique focus in contrasting and counterpointing the old with the new. Welcome to my exhibition. I have um, four different topics. It's the old Shanghai, the new Shanghai, the fast-moving Shanghai and the disappearing Shanghai. As long as I live in China, I will have the opportunity to capture the current China and the changing China. At the same time, I have a chance then to um, capture the future of China because I'm on that journey with China together. And the other one's Charlie Shaw. Dazzling cars, amazing architecture, skyscrapers, light knife, and more. Charlie Shaw's camera has a busy life indeed. From a talent discovered six years ago to covering world-famous brands like Nike and Porsche, Charlie has found not only his passion, but his career for life. Working as a freelance photographer, his works can be found in city magazines and famous photo albums like Vision and Wallpaper. What makes you to become a photographer? Just coming back to Shanghai, seeing the contrasts and uh... Also, my dad's camera also helps. <laughs> Your dad's camera? Yeah, he, he let me lend his Leica M6, which uh -huh. is a very nice camera. I learned photography from that. And at first into Well, this. I, I guess when I first came back, I was really jet lagged. So uh -huh. basically, uh, when I woke up, it was still pretty, pretty early in the morning. So I'd go out mm -hmm. and take pictures. And so that's, that's how it started. And how about you, Thomas? I uh, started maybe roughly 25 years ago, actually. 25 but, years yeah, ago? Yeah, so I was still. Uh, uh, a boy, a young kid, a young kid. <laughs> and um, my father was in the photography, so um, he, he brought the camera to me. Where it got more crazy is since I'm in in China, really, because uh, for me, the interesting part is the diversity here. I have a chance now to um, walk the alleys here, the streets, yeah. and take pictures. And I, I see what I actually like is the, you know, the the old and the new, the fast and the slow, the mm -hmm. the, the tall and the small, mm -hmm. the contrast and the discrepancies. What's your focus then? I like to capture the, the scale of the city, the environment we live in, uh, in comparison to, to you know the, the individual. A mm -hmm. uh, city where you know it's a mass collection of people, mm -hmm. and um, where do you find that individual inside of a city? Mm -hmm. The first thing you notice when you come to Shanghai is, wow, you know, th this is a really contrasting city. A lot <laughs> of, you know. To you, Charlie, mm -hmm. as a Chinese, what's the unique charm of China or a unique charm of Shanghai to you? Its pace of life. Pace it's of life. very fast. Mm -hmm. Everything is expanding at such a fast rate. So that's, that's the most exciting thing about Shanghai. And how about you? How do you interpret the, uh, the unique charm of Shanghai or China? You know, you meet uh, professional photographers or mm -hmm. artists or film producers or other, other people. And mm -hmm. you actually don't know when you talk to them. They are mm -hmm. very open. You just talk to them. And then next time you meet them, you figure out what they actually do. And this gives a, a great possibility for me to explore 
uh, what they do, I can share what I do besides my work. Can you both show us some of your work, some of your photography, please? These are shots I'm taking um, in alleys uh, in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. um, Looks like a fisheye shot. Right? This is a fisheye shot, yeah, mm -hmm. 180 degree. It's a night shot, long, very long exposure. Mm -hmm. It's actually a very dark area. Mm -hmm. so oh, that's very dark? How come the sky is, uh, is, is, br is still bright? It's light pollution, actually, I see. in the same area. Um, uh -huh. so wow, so shots. colorful. Very colorful. New and yeah. the contrast of the new and and It's also, when you see on the, on the left side from you, it's the mm -hmm. uh, old piece, then you see the pearl towel, the new, yep. and then the fast moving. So it looks it, like a bus. It's like a, it's a bus actually <clears throat> on this mm -hmm. case. This one is taken right after sunset. Mm. Um, so you have the blue, the blue hour. This is Shanghai or Hong Kong? <laughs> it looks a little like Hong Kong buildings yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, right. it's Shanghai. It's, it's not far from Morgan San Lu. Oh, okay. um, it's not far from there. That was actually a night where I thought I have no luck with any good pictures, and then that was the final, mm -hmm. the final uh, shots I have taken. Some other work, taking uh, faces or situations, uh, you know, where they're playing here or on the market, or mm -hmm. um, people sleeping, or the, the, the kids mm -hmm. here walking in their pajama on the street. I yeah. like portrait, but I don't like studio photography. So, okay. so uh, if people don't know that I take photos from them. Mm -hmm. then I like it. Once they know, it's uh, not that interesting for me anymore. <laughs> okay, fantastic. How about you, Charlie? <clears throat> this was when I first got back to Shanghai. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. This is the very first picture you took? You this is one took? of my first roles. Oh. This is one of my first roles uh, I took in Shanghai. This is on the Bund at around, I'd say, 7 or 6 o'clock. In the this morning? Lady, yeah, this lady was walking her dog, uh -huh. and it was basically totally empty, except mm. for some people doing exercises. So um, this is actually the point where I decided you know, I could, I could do some more with photography. Uh, I think this is a very photographed spot mm -hmm. in Shanghai. That's Chengdulu, huh? Chengdulu and Yanlu intersection. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing a new series on elevated roads, concentrating mm -hmm. just on the geometry and the mm -hmm. texture. This mm -hmm. taken with film, yeah? Yeah, all, all of these are taken on film, on developed film. by myself and enlarged. The scale of the city, you know, something mm -hmm. like this. The skyline. <laughs> that, oh, that's Xin Tian Di area, and then they had like a, a high bob figure here, which <laughs> I thought was pretty funny. Just, you know, the contrast between the city and mm -hmm. the individual. So here, you see some people in, in, inside. This is mm -hmm. actually the, the statue on the Bund. One, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, the uh, three. That's right, the three museum. things. And yeah, somebody sitting on, on, on the museum and then the background. Mm -hmm. Again. So both Thomas and Charlie are capturing uh, the modern China. But in the history, there are uh, quite a few uh, famous photographers, among them such as uh, Eugene Smith, Mach Hibu. And those people have helped the world understand China better. So when we come back, we're going to show you the China through their lenses. This is too big, too complex, too fast. The skill of photography is really easy. What you're trying to say with a photo, that's the difficult part. It's the difference between being a Chinese and a German. So for me, it's a, the face is the story. The earliest pictures of China date back to 1844, taken by Frenchman Jules Ittier. In the 1930s, combat photographer Robert Kappa shot a series about China during the anti-Japanese war. But it was the photos taken during the 1950s and 1960s that aroused Western interest in China. Although significant in its historic documentary value, Early Western photos do have some limitations. They 
一种框架来看中国的，因为他们毕竟不了解中国，他也不会用中文和老百姓交谈，啊，他也看不懂中文，看不懂报纸，他往往得到的信息、了解的观念都是西方社会、主流社会那那些对中国的判断。Since 1978, China has opened itself to the outside world. As a result, more and more photographers have had a chance to spend time in the country to see firsthand the rapid developments of China. Their photography has transformed from one of personal curiosity to trying to understand what they are recording. I know a Chinese photographer called Robert. He lived in Shanghai for many years. His plan was to film a Chinese person. He wanted to enter the people of Chinese people's homes. 选择几十户、一百户或者两百户的家庭，他从这个侧面来反映中国人的一种物质生活和精神面貌。As China develops, many great domestic photographers have emerged. They understand China, its people, the language, and the culture. But what of Western photographers? Perhaps it is the lack of local knowledge that gives them a distance to create beauty, or to capture something we might have overlooked. 国外的摄影师，他来了中国，他看到我们很多司空见惯的东西，他会有一种新鲜感，啊，他能把他脑子里某一点东西激活。Nowadays, Western photographers have expanded their field from photojournalism to commercial shots in fashion, food, and nightlife, coinciding with technological inventions like the digital camera and the internet. Everyone can take pictures of China and share them with the rest of the world. This era is too big, too complex, and has changed too quickly. And it is in the eyes of many in the medical field that it is happening. If we take the photo of China as a world record, this world needs a group of people who are committed to the effort and who are persevering for many years to make it happen. Because this era has passed, it will never be there again. Welcome back to Culture Matters. Welcome back to Couch and Matters. Joining us here in the studio are two photographers. They captured the modern China. Thomas, Thomas、uh, Voitin from Germany and、uh, Charlie Sha. Thomas, have you ever encountered、uh, difficulties or problems by taking pictures on the street? For instance, like those pictures. Will people <laughs> welcome、yeah. you to take those pictures? Depends where As you... a foreigner? Yeah.、Uh -huh. it, it really depends where you go.、Um, Different regions in China have the people are, have a different behavior when you take pictures. So Shanghai could be they could be more、um, outgoing. Let's say this is like the Chang'anese are, and、uh, if you go Yunnan or Tibet or、uh, went to Xinjiang,、uh, mm -hmm. the people are very different. But what you need to do in, initially, I have to spend time at the place, or I have to be fast enough.、Um, most of the better shots, you have to be really fast. That's why you say this, you're racing the time, race against the time. To capture the moments, right? I like the fraction of the second, so it's either a good shot or a bad shot. So、mm -hmm. when I come home and and take a look at it,、um, whether people come out well with the story, with their wrinkles, with their emotions, or their fun. For me, it's more about taking the time. You you see something, and then you wait for something to happen.、Mm -hmm. When that time comes, then you, you press the button. What if there's no ideal person who comes into the <laughs> well, frame? You wait. What, you, you wait till the next day? Yeah. Well, you wait. <laughs> it's <laughs> like、really? fishing. Yeah, something something has to happen. <laughs> Thomas, you you、uh, consider yourself a self-taught photographer. Yes. So, <laughs> so you have never learned anything from、no. from the others. No, I, I mean I got my camera in very early days, and since then I just I just do what I like. I I, I experiment a lot. It's trial and error.、Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, photography is really easy. <laughs> it's just it's the skill of photography is really easy.、Mm -hmm. The content. You know what? What you're trying to say with a photo—that's、mm -hmm. the difficult part.、That's、Just like painting, exactly. Any, any, exactly. Any, any other art format, exactly.、Right? So, what distinguishes you from the others? Distinguishes <laughs> me from the others.、Mm -hmm. The tough one. Personally, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like taking photos, and that's, that's all. What, and people like seeing my photos, so I guess that's. I think about the scale of, of people. In relation to the city,、mm -hmm. so most of my photos of people are, are not close up, not not like those portrait shots.、Mm -hmm. In some cases, you can learn more about a person from you know from a distance, from, from a their distance. posture,、mm -hmm. from how they're moving,、um, from how how wh what they are doing, what they're looking at,、mm -hmm. uh, instead of like really up close and just you know seeing a face.、Mm -hmm. That's a difference、mm -hmm. between 
being a Chinese and a German, so for me, it's a, the face is the story. So, mm -hmm. but it's depending on the mood actually when you take it. So for me, the close up has has a lot of meaning. Reading the the wrinkles and um, you know the, the old people mm -hmm. and and how the light is set in the faces, um, mm -hmm. telling a telling many many stories. So that's a very interesting yeah. point. Now let me go back to Charlie first. We would take a, <laughs> a photo of the faces like like the close up shots. There's a foreigner. <laughs> when I was in Germany, I wasn't a photographer. Oh, okay. so <laughs> yeah. what? What? What about afterwards? I mean, after after you became a photographer, actually, when, when you're traveling around the world, so what will you do? The way I see things is a combination of of my upbringing, of course, um, living in the States, Germany, and the UK. I don't consider myself to my viewpoint to mm -hmm. be very Chinese. Okay, I should say I, I notice the the contrast more or the mm -hmm. the differences more than maybe somebody who just grew up in Shanghai. Okay. I want to have everything just right. My composition is very, um, sometimes very still. That might be German, you know, <laughs> we can debate that. Okay. You're recording the changes of a society, uh, particularly Shanghai. What kind of changes did they discover through their lenses? We discussed that after the break. We'll be back momentarily. It's a lot of different things to a lot of different people, so I like to capture all these different aspects. This is a period where, you know, change is the only constant. The picture doesn't come to you, you have to go to the picture. It's very easy to set up, so if you hold it like that... Oh! Welcome back to Culture Matters. Join us here are two photographers, Thomas Voiton and Charlie Shaw. Now, you guys have been uh, recording the changes or the daily life of the, uh, of the city. So what kind of changes have you discovered? What I tried to capture is the old part of Shanghai. So and then The old part. The old part, but um, combined with the new parts. I tried to put it in a, a light, it still looks nice, even if it's demolished. At least oh, okay. in my eyes, it looks nice. I'm not sure if everyone likes this. Is one of one of the shots maybe are very um, clear what I'm trying ah. to say. So the old stone gate and the new um, yeah, new, new tower, tower. Yeah. new tower on the back. As a Chinese, do you think that you have the obligation to record the changes of the country or the city or the society that you have lived that you are living? You know, I do a lot of event stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, I have it all in, in my hard drive. I mean, after 10, 20 years. It's going to be interesting looking at those photos because that this this is a period where you know change is the only constant. Change is a part of life. This is Thomas' camera, right? That's what correct. kind of camera is this? It's, it's a uh, looks like a traditional <laughs> all manual camera, right? With a with, you, with you a have, big lens. Yeah, you have any any uh, choice actually. Every fully manual or fully automated, whatever oh, okay. you like. The, the photos on the camera still take like a film camera. Mm -hmm. But when I come home, I, of course, take a look at this. And then I remember how I've taken them. And then I can learn next time and say, oh, I have to change the settings. I have to do things differently. And, and that's how I, maybe the last few years, more uh, faster development of the work I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I see. Should I? Uh, sure, of course. Please, please. All right. Wow. So uh, in this box is my camera. You got many of them or just? Oh, I got a few. But this ah. is my uh, large format 4x5. Four by five. That's right. This is how big the the, the film the picture is. Film is. is. That's that's why I used to enlarge those pictures so the quality. I I could blow it up to two meters, no problem. Okay. Detail. Uh, so see the, the oh, unique this is thing even about bigger, bigger than one twenty, huh? Yeah, all well, much bigger. It's I saw this kind of a camera mostly in the times. studio. No, but this one is actually designed for architecture because it's very light. It's very com compact and yeah. it's very easy to set up. So if you hold it like that. The dial. Oh, okay. The lens. The lens is German. <laughs> I like German lenses. Is it a Zeiss? Zeiss, yeah. Zeiss. Yeah. Zeiss. 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 Carl Zeiss. Okay. It's a Carl Zeiss. Uh, Carl it's Zeiss. a very rare lens, actually. This lens, only 100 of these lenses were made. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. With this coating. So it looks like, it doesn't look like a zoom lens. No, <laughs> everything is fixed. So okay, everything is fixed. Uh, once you have it set up, you got the focus. The cool thing about this camera is that you could shift the lens up. Mm. So when you're shooting architecture, instead of yeah, instead of having um, converging um, okay. parallel lines, they could be straight. Oh. So you're you're shifting up, and also 
another interesting thing, which a lot of people are doing now, is the tilting. So oh. this would change the, the plane of focus. Uh -huh. So one side would be sharp. The other side will, will be blurry. Oh, OK. So photography for me, you know, that's, as I said, before you take the shot, you have to make sure everything's adjusted right. You use this kind of camera on the street? It's always on a tripod. Always on a yeah. tripod. I know that people might, uh, you, you'd be probably uh, surrounded at all times. Uh, occasionally you get people looking at me. I, I don't get bothered by that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, nowadays, people on the street, almost everyone, almost everybody had their own camera, either the small digital or sometimes people use their uh, cell phone. People can take pictures much easier than Everywhere, before. Anytime. So let's, let's go to the street. Let's listen to what people would do with their cameras. Uh, looking at the architecture, um, looking at the people. There's so many different aspects to China from sort of the local lifestyle to the scenery to uh, the cosmopolitan nature of you know, Shanghai and Beijing. It's, it's a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So I like to capture all these different aspects. I ask the people, I I have an old wife, he's cleaning the fish, and he, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> so I ask her. I think we try to capture, you know, bits of everyday life as opposed to just skyscrapers or just this, you know. Random street, street shots in Shanghai are, you know, fantastic. And I think this conveys what really happens on the ground here in Shanghai. Share some of them on the internet with uh, web galleries. I actually develop them and then I, uh, for the most part, I hang them up in my house. I have a little gallery in my house mainly on Facebook. With our relatives who live all over the world. So we put them on a computer and we upload them in an album and then we can show them to everybody we like. See, everybody considers themselves a photo photographer now, right? Okay. So what determines a good picture? A good photo has to have meaning. Meaning? Yeah. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. It has to mean something to you or, mm -hmm. um, and it has to mean something to the people who are looking at it. So it, can, it shouldn't be something abstract? Abstract things can have meaning. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's Abst true. That's abstract true. people like your photos or yourself. Is, is it is both. I, I, yeah. If I don't feel anything from a photo, I wouldn't, I you wouldn't consider it a good anything. photo. Mm -hmm. And I would also like the photo to mean something to other people. Mm -hmm. I see. So what's your recommendation to make a good pictures? Don't shoot at the first instant. Mm -hmm. Think about it before. And uh, you know, if, if it's something, if it's something happening really fast, mm -hmm. you you have to make sure that everything is set up right mm -hmm. before you take a shot. Taking your time is very important, mm -hmm. and uh, this only comes from you know uh, practicing. Mm -hmm. You have to practice at at taking your time, and then when the time comes, take take that shot. Mm -hmm. But if you take you know a hundred shots, there's no practice in that. You don't you know. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't capture the moment anymore. You're mm -hmm. just so, you're kind of like mm -hmm. shooting film. It's also so, said that the, you know, your the, the picture doesn't come to you. You have to go to the picture mm -hmm. or to the the object or motive. So the mm -hmm. the thing is, you cannot wait somewhere and then hope it, it it the scene will change. You have to go there. You have to climb a mountain. You have to make yourself dirty somewhere if you want to take that particular shot. So you have to go there. It's not coming to you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's maybe the second. Of course, waiting, patience is one thing. <laughs> but most of the time, people are trying to just...